Hello again from Custom Home Builder Solutions, also known as CHS, a job costing, full accounting, and profit management software for the professional home builder. This video will be the continuation in a series of discussions about the main reason for having CHS, which is the estimated cost at completion worksheet that can be used as such a dashboard for monitoring your profits and job costs on a job. So I've clicked this button for budget estimates again and then I've gone to our demo job that we've been using so much and I clicked the ECC work to open the ECC worksheet. I already had it open because I was looking it over. And one of the really important things um, that you would need to be doing on this estimated cost at completion worksheet is check marking costs as done. If you're not going to have any more actual costs posted, um, you would check mark them as done. Um, let's just take an example here. Let's say for some reason HBA assessments, we did budget for it, but we've figured out now somehow or another that we will not actually be paying for any of that. So show that, notice this over budget amount that's down here at the bottom of the screen based on how much the estimated cost of completion today are going, are being over or under budget. And it's a sum of all this over budget numbers here and you'll see that some of those are in red because they're over um, as you scroll down, etc. So let's take a look at what happens to this over budget number. If I check mark HBA assessments and the actual costs are zero, if I check mark those are as done, the estimated cost at completion for this at HBA assessments will go to zero. It will supply um, as the ECC the amount that you have in actual costs. Now if I refresh these totals, you'll see that our over budget amount has gone down. This can be very important um, in some additional videos. I'm going to be talking about how you can monitor where your estimated profit is heading. And so you'd like to know um, things like this, that you won't be paying that $900 anymore. Um, let's scroll down and let's see. Uh, Let's see one, it, I think appliances down here. Let's take a look at that. And we're going through things. Let's play like we're going through things and deciding which things to check mark as done um, based on that they've all been entered and you know there won't be any more, etc. But notice how we have actual costs posted of $7,020, but we have POs out there for $7,576. So right now our estimated cost at completion is sitting at $75.76. But let's use this little um, notes and see if we see anything about this. We're, we're looking and we say, well, $7,000 sounds like most of the costs of the appliances. Um, you can see that the PO that we issued was created from some items that we entered. And perhaps we entered something even sort of wrong or we talked to them later and we got a lower price on something. So when they sent the bill, which is these two lines, the bill plus the sales tax, um, turns out that the bookkeeper typed in the invoice is less than the purchase order issued, but it includes all of the appliances. In other words, we've paid for all of the appliances that were on the P. And we've paid for, there was the buyer added a fridge as a change order, and we can see right here looking at it that we've paid for it. So just studying on this, I think we can decide that we've posted all the actual costs that we intend to have for this um, actually an allowance item. And if you've watched videos about allowances, I'm going to show you something about this. Um, first of all, before I check market, let's look at our allowance analysis over under. Um, this isn't a full video about um, allowances, but notice the total appliance package um, is showing an adjustment up of $695.50. We had some combination of different demos of doing some various odd things. <laughs> but anyway, right now it's showing because it's based on the estimated cost at completion of $75.76. So let's close this and let's um, check mark it. Let's say all the costs we're going to have is this $7,020. So we are zero over budget now because we actually did an original budget plus change orders, 7020 For some odd reason, we issued this PO for more than what we had budgeted. Um, who knows? But 
now we're marking this that's all we're going to have and if you look at your allowance tools again and you look at that allowance over under analysis you're going to see total appliance package sometimes we have a little bit of a rounding and so we might have a penny in there um, based on various percent markups etc the difference but basically there is no, no not going to be any adjustment where they owe us more for the appliance package or we owe them etc credit so you can see how important that would be because the only way we can do um, allowance adjustment overages is to go ahead and look at what the current ECC is, but you can definitely make the ECC equal to what the actual costs are by using check marks. Um, also, if I refresh the totals, now we're only over budget by 634.29. In another area I'll be getting into, I think, a little bit more is if you look at your estimated profit by using the price and profit button it is very definitely depending when it calculates something and figuring out what your profit is it is using the current estimated cost at completion this is marked as a cost plus markup job so it's taking the current ECC plus the 25 percent showing what our revised price is showing what our revised profit is and it's up by 2200 but if I had overstated or if I uncheck that um, this amount right here and then I look at our profit we have a little more profit of 2300 so that's pretty weird but oh, that has to do with estimated cost of completion over and unders um, hard to get into but it is calculating so it's it's uh, readjusted itself to use the estimated cost of completion but let's mark that as done that one's an allowance item so actually it actually favorably kind of impacts profit which doesn't make a lot of sense but I'm not going to get into that all right now let's put this 900 back in and see if we it is a cost plus and so that's probably not a good one for me to be demonstrating with um, it makes a big difference if it's a fixed contract, but the cost plus is moving up and down um, all the time based on costs that you're going to spend. Plus, that's right, if your costs are going up, you're actually going to make a little more profit because it's a cost plus markup. Now, let me think right in my brain here for a second. But if it was a fixed contract, and we'll put it back, but if it was a fixed contract, um, we can see that we're only we're estimated to get 536 more dollars for our profit than we had thought but if I check mark this as being done it should go up by that 900 if I look at it my estimated profit on a fixed contract yeah now it's 1400 and something so you see how valuable and important it is for you to get your check marks in if you're wanting to analyze where your profit is headed on a job excuse all my little fumbling around now the other things I wanted to point out is instead of just looking at each one of these maybe you're very near the job and you just really want all of them check marked as done now there's first of all um, instead of just check marking and waiting for it to call back to the server and updating because you have a little lag you'll notice that if I check mark something um, let me check mark this one is done so it's it's updating it on the server so it can redo all your ECC calculation um, but if you want to just run through and just really quickly just start check mark check mark check mark check mark without it being submitted back to the server you can do that um, on this window and just run through all your costs it'll just show you what your budget plus COs were and plus what your actual cost didn't have so much drill down information but in case you're knowing you want to check mark a whole bunch of them and you want to do it fast you can do that and then just click the save button um, and, and then let all of it call back to the server and recalculate your ECC for you so that's what that buttons about about quick check marks there's also another check mark tool that I'd like to go over um, let's just uncheck this one for a minute but notice how it's calculating that it's a hundred percent done this one's a hundred percent done um, and you might study on this before you do this but this is a hundred percent done this is a hundred percent 
and you think, you know, I just like to get all those 100% dones marked, check marked as done. Here's one 100% done. So let's take a look at this check mark tool. One of them is that we could just check, and you might do this after a job is done and you haven't check marked a bunch. You could just check all actual costs as done, and every one of them will get check marked. That means that your ECC or estimated costs at completion will equal your actual costs. You can also, for some reason, you just want to uncheck all actual costs as done. You can. But here's the one that I'd like to talk about is check actual costs as done based on a percent complete. And let's only do the 100% complete. Now some builders, when it's near the end of the job, will use something like 95% complete because they're assuming if it's, if it's calculating 95% of actual costs have been posted, 95% of the ECC, they're assuming that that is all the actual costs. So they might use 98% and then um, use this button to ch place check marks everything based on the percent entered place entered above and it's going to do everything for this number or higher so let's place check marks based on that percent of a hundred percent and let's close this and close and refresh our worksheet so it will refresh um, all of the numbers and we can refresh our totals down here we can see you know what our over budget is after we're marking all those and you can see that anything a hundred percent over here has now been checked where it wasn't before I did this so that's what that's all about um, and a quick way to do it and a quick way to get those check marks in one very important reason is our cost variance reports comparing budget um, to, uh, they compare the budget to the ECC because that's much more useful information for giving you variance reports. Um, it's the same kind of reports that will show you this ECC and how much over or under budget you currently expect to be. Um, that's much more valuable than if you do just an original simple budget um, to actual costs posted so far because if you'll notice this actual over under budget early in the job like this one is this um, actual cost being under budget by 282,000 is just because our posted costs our posted bills are that much less than what our budget is and that's not actually very useful information until after a job is closed really to compare your budget to your actual and that's what you'll see on a lot of programs is that they're just doing that I mean, it can let you know how much you might have left um, of your budget to spend, you know, how much under. I have some other things that also do that, so it can be sort of interesting, but it's not really telling you um, very well what your variances are. If you actually have a cost codes variance report using the ECC and the ECC over or under budget, then this number down here of 634 is actually much more meaningful. Um, plus, maybe you've adjusted your ECC because you know of something more or something less. This number of 359816 versus this number of budgets plus estimated change order costs, um, it's really more meaningful if you are tending to your estimated cost at completion worksheet, putting check boxes on the done. Um, then it's giving you a really true and good picture of where your variances are headed, what you're expecting them to be today, um, rather than sometime after the fact. So it's important to um, open your estimated cost of completion, get your actual costs check marked as done so you can evaluate where your profit is and evaluate where you're headed. So you do want to go ahead and indicate things like, well, even though we budgeted 900, we really aren't going to have that cost, etc. Things like that. So hopefully that will help you with what those actual check marks are for, for actual costs being done, and how valuable it can be for you to monitor those as far as giving you the information that you, the builder, need to have. Thank you for watching.